Okay guys, in this lecture what I want to talk about is the curve on surface brushes and how we can control the way they work inside of ZBrush. So what I've got here is a basic cylinder with just one division along here and I've just got this uh, new brush which is a square ridge brush. So if I select this beveled ridge here and I click on the model and I drag, I can of course draw out my line like that and if I want to switch tools I can click this and click on this and it will turn it will change what you'll also notice about this is there's only three two poly groups on this piece which means that I could easily select the top piece and extrude it out so if I selected it here control shift control shift on this mask this control shift click control control drag Ooh. like that and then use move Ooh. hold on let me do this again mask control shift control click move then I've got control to push my detail out okay so but the problem is what if I want this to align so it goes a loop all the way around here so with jewelry design obviously this is quite important because we want it to go around the model so let's have a look at how we can control this so if I press the control Z and go back a few here just to get rid of this like that and back to draw mode what I can do is I can go on the model with this brush selected I can click where my start point is I can drag and then I can hold the shift key and when you hold the shift key and you drag off the model it will put a loop around it this loop can be changed at angles like this or just put in position so when I release we've now got that perfectly around the model so of course unmask control shift control drag put it on here do the same thing hold that shift key and release and there you go and of course you can change this off like this but if we have an area such as this one here if I do the same and I hold that shift key then I've got problems because maybe I want it to be going round this loop here or round this edge here so if I click on that edge hold the shift I can't get it to go across to there which is a nightmare and this is where polygroups can come in so let me go to the Z modeler brush and I'm going to form a poly a new poly loop around here so I'm going to mouse over this, make sure that little orange is facing down. I'm going to go poly group and I'm going to go poly loop, poly group. Okay. And I'm going to click in there once and it should have made that a separate poly group, which it has. You just can't see it. <laughs> it's the same color. So if I press the control shift in here, click on this piece and just invert it press ctrl w just to make it a nice color now we've got a poly loop running around here so we just use the z modeler we went over we made sure the orange was facing around the poly loop we went poly group poly loop and poly group okay so now if i use that brush again what you're going to see is it will detect this edge so let's make this nice and small Let's go over this edge. See, I'm just on that point. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag. And watch what happens. It's formed a loop. So there we have it. So if I reduce this down now, make that brush size smaller, and I could even swap it out. Click on the model, unmask it. Straight away, I've got that nice loop running over there. 
but it goes even further than that. If I come up to this one here, which has got a poly loop around this piece here, I could also go in here, select that edge of that poly group, click, hold the shift, release, and I've got it running around there. Of course, I can change the size, deselect, click on the model. I'm going to do the same for this. Click on the model, deselect, and suddenly I have this running round those poly groups. Of course, if I want one running around the ring as well, I can go over here, make sure poly group poly loops clicked, click in there, go back to my brush, click on here, run this around by holding that shift key, move this down, and there we go. Unmask that, and I've suddenly created that in a few seconds. So that's having control. There is also the option inside of the Z modeler of using edges to do this stuff, but I've found that it does cause a problem. Now at the moment, the brush we're using is just a standard insert brush. It's not a tri brush, it's not got three parts. So let me show you the method that you can use using the Z modeler brush to select paths and it'll all be clear. So I'm gonna come in this one, just gonna go back. Let's go back to here. Make that one poly group. Okay, so if I wanna use Z Modeler um, with this brush, it's gonna be good. I'm gonna go into here, Z Modeler, BZ on your keyboard. I'm gonna go over an edge I'm going to press the space bar and I'm going to go to the option to add to curve. Now you're only going to get one option down here under target. Now when I release this, I can click in here and I can start to build my curve. So obviously this takes a lot longer, but you could go off at a tangent. So you could go around the curve like this right the way over until it links up okay so now that's linked up I can go in and grab my brush again and I can click on here and there we go but the problem with this method is if I switch to a different type of brush I'm going to go to one of my swirl brushes that I created in this course and this swirl brush um, has actually got it's a tri brush so it's got three poly groups so I'll go to something like this so it's got a start a middle that repeats and an end so if I click with this what you're going to get is it's not going to work like you expect it to because it's going to give you the start the middle the end so it's like this tool this Zeb modeler curve function has created a curve for each of the sections of the poly group which is not what we want so it works fine with a single brush because this is how it works normally let me just click drag okay you've got an end the middle is repeating and then you've got the start and you've got the middle repeating and the end part but if you look at this it's just giving you the whole brush so I think a more effective way of working with this is to actually use the poly loop method. So if I just go back a few here, with this brush and I click in here, and I drag. Now what I've got is I've got a start and an end. So I've got the start, then this piece repeats, and then I've got the end. So I personally prefer to use the poly grouped method than to actually use the Z remesher curve surface but if you're using a single brush it can be fine okay so if I was using a brush that's just got one insert like this square ridge brush then it's going to be perfect because I can go over this edge 
make sure it adds curve and curve and I can click in here and because it's one piece I can now go to this brush click in there and there we go you'll also notice it hasn't welded it so I think there's definite limitations to this brush let me just check under the modifiers that I haven't got weld turned on yeah I've got weld turned on could increase the overlap see if it welds yeah it's kind of but definitely prefer the polygroup method for doing this it's just a lot more efficient I can just put this on here and set my polygroups I can press that shift key and it just wraps around and gives me what I expect so although the Z modeler is good for selecting the curves and creating the path um, I personally prefer using the polygroup method to actually do it. And of course, once you've got this set, oh, let's go back to the brush. You can isolate part of this, invert it, and scale it up or modify it however you want it to using masking and that polygroup method. Now we've already created these brushes so I've shown you how to do that but I just thought I'd give you a quick um, workshop lesson on how you can control curves using polygroups inside of ZBrush. This free lecture is brought to you by Mojo Mojo Design and is a lecture from my Jewelry Design in ZBrush 2019 Next Generation Techniques course to be found in the, on the link below. So if you want to check this course out, you can visit uh, my site at courses.mojomojodesign and there you'll find full information about this very, very in-depth course. These are the sections and the lectures of this course. It's absolutely huge and I'm adding to it all the time.